So uh, our next session today is based on, uh, yeah, we'll focus on a discussion of drug discovery approaches which are based on strategies that target either normal or pathological uh, endogenous stem cell uh, populations or processes. Uh, and to start off, I'd like to quickly tell you about a project we've been working on for the last couple of years, uh, which is very, will be published tomorrow, which has been focused on identifying novel small molecule regulators that enhance uh, the regenerative process of remyelination. Uh, as most people in this room know, uh, multiple sclerosis is a debilitating neurologic disease, uh, which is autoimmune-based, which is characterized by the primary demyelination of axons. Existing treatments for MS are based exclusively uh, on, on uh, uh, targets that target the uh, immune response, immunosuppressive strategies. And despite recent excitement about the approval of orally available immunosuppressants FTY720 and uh, dimethyl fumarate, uh, this strategy invariably fails and the disease progresses to a state of chronic demyelination. And so a promising alternative or uh, complementary approach uh, to immunosuppression for the treatment of MS is a strategy that's been talked about for the last couple of years, which involves identifying agents which can directly stimulate the regenerative process of remyelination, which is required for uh, disease remission. Uh, remyelination is a, is a process which uh, persists throughout adulthood in the, in the CNS uh, and uh, in contrast to myelin repair, it involves the generation of newly born oligodendrocytes uh, which are, are promyelinating cells. Uh, these cells originate from an abundantly uh, present population of proliferating cells known as oligodendrocyte precursor cells or OPCs. They're also known as NG2 glia. Uh, and what's known in MS is that remission is largely dependent on these precursor cells migrating to sites of injury and subsequently differentiating to a mature myelinating oligodendrocyte fate. And as disease progresses and it ultimately uh, declines, uh, for unknown reasons, this process of remyelination fails. Um, evaluation of histopathology data uh, from chronic lesions uh, derived from MS patients indicates that it's not a, f a, a depletion of this population or a failure of this population to be able to migrate to sites of injury uh, as disease progresses, but rather it's inhibition of differentiation, OPC differentiation at these sites of injury for unknown reasons, which is causative in disease progression. And so the goal of our project it was to identify novel modulators, namely small drug-like molecules, which could directly promote the differentiation of OPCs and potentially overcome this limitation. The approach we took was to use uh, uh, high-content imaging-based phenotypic assays to screen large library of potential drug candidates. And so the assay we developed uh, to, to identify these agents is based on uh, primary uh, OPCs derived from rad optic nerve, which we could obtain and proliferate in vitro using PDGF uh, and obtain sufficient quantities of cells that are required for high throughput screening. And so using a, a known inducer of OPC differentiation, thyroid hormone, we, we established conditions where we could identify, which would allow us to identify novel agents that would induce uh, OPC differentiation by simply staining for myelin basic protein. So upon establishing uh, assay conditions, we miniaturized to a 3D4 well format and then used a, a fairly straightforward cell scoring based imaging algorithm to detect agents that enhance the percentage of MPV positive uh, cells in a well following six days of treatment. We used this assay to screen a, a collection of about 100,000 uh, structurally diverse drug-like molecules in addition to a collection of bioactive compounds which included a panel of FDA approved drugs and from the screen we identified a number of known modulators <coughs> of OPC differentiation which unfortunately uh, have limited clinical potential due to known toxicity or tissue distribution issues. In addition to this, we also identified a number of novel scaffolds of unknown function, which we continue to work on and evaluate. Uh, but most promisingly, we identified a, a panel of uh, neurotransmitter receptor modulating agents for which OPC differentiation activity had not previously been reported. And we decided to focus on this class of molecules because uh, several of these are FDA approved drugs, which were known to be centrally acting and so they have potential to be quickly uh, transitioned into the clinic. Uh, amongst the most uh, efficacious compounds was a, a tropine-based compound known as benztropine, which is an FDA-approved drug for the treatment of Parkinson's. Uh, in vitro assays demonstrated uh, that this compound induced robust differentiation of, of OPCs to a mature MPP-positive state, in addition to other, uh, multiple other markers of, of a mature oligodendrocyte at non-toxic doses. 
And uh, time course studies indicated that this compound acts at an early OPC state rather than A2B5 state, rather than an intermediate pre adenosate state. In collaboration with the Gage Lab uh, here at Salk, uh, we uh, found that benzotropine significantly enhanced the myelination of axons of neurons uh, in, in an OPC uh, neuron co-culture assay. And so we were encouraged by these results and decided to proceed. Now, as I mentioned, uh, benzotropine is an approved drug for the treatment of Parkinson's. Uh, it's a known, it's, it's thought that its mechanism of action as Parkinson's is, is its anti-muscarinic activity, which functions to regulate the ratio of acetylcholine to dopamine signal in, in Parkinson's patients. Uh, however, like many compounds in this class, uh, it has is pleiotropic pharmacology in that it hits a number of, of neurotransmitter receptors. And so uh, uh, we performed a series of pharmacology-based studies to try and figure out which of the known biological activities of this compound is required for OPC differentiation. And uh, long story short, we found that activity of this compound in inducing OPC differentiation is dependent on and requires uh, direct antagonism of M1, M3 receptors. However, we also looked at a panel of 42 other anti and only 20 of those were active. So at this point, we can't rule out the possibility that the mechanism of action is dependent on something that we don't know. Uh, but we know that it definitely requires M1, M3 uh, antagonism. Um, we, we then went on to evaluate the compound in a, a preclinical rodent model of, of relapsing remitting uh, MS, which is the PLP-induced model. And uh, initially, we, we evaluated the drug by dosing in a prophylactic mode by initiating a daily drug injection uh, at the same time that we immunized with PLP antigen. And quite encouragingly, in this initial study, we saw a very dramatic effect at suppressing clinical severity at, during both the acute as well as the relapse phase of disease. We then went on to study the compound uh, in, a, in a therapeutic dosing mode where we initiate dosing at the onset of disease. And we compared the efficacy of this drug to uh, known standard of care agents for MS, the immunosuppressants FTY 720 and interferon, which were also dosed daily at reported therapeutic doses. And quite encouragingly, we found that our, our compound, benzotropine, significantly decreased uh, clinical severity with an efficacy at both the acute and the relapse phase, which was equivalent to or better than standard of care drugs. When we did histology, uh, looking at spinal cords isolated from mice at the, uh, day 14, which is the acute phase of disease, what we found is a significant increase in the amount of uh, myelin positive uh, stain in, in the cross section, consistent with a, a promyelinating activity. In addition, uh, when we stain globally for MBP and also look at T-cell infiltration, what we observe is that there is, there is no significant effect of benzotropine treatment on the amount of T-cell infiltration we observe in spinal cords during both uh, at the onset and the acute phase of disease. However, in vehicle-treated mice, these areas of, t of infiltration of the spinal cord, uh, shown here and here, uh, almost exclusively correlate with areas of demyelination. And in contrast, in benzotropine treated mice, we frequently observe areas of, of intense T cell infiltration in which we see no demyelination. Again, with a, a consistent with a mechanism where we're getting enhanced uh, myelin formation. We used EM to, to further uh, evaluate and quantify uh, this uh, remyelination effect. And what we see macroscopically is that we have a, a significant increase in the number of axons in spinal cords, which are myelinated, as indicated here, in contrast to vehicle. And further, if we look microscopically, we see a pattern of, of, and thickness of myelin around axons, which is consistent with remyelination. Namely, uh, a normal uh, myelin sheath looks like this with a thick layer of myelin. In vehicle treatment, you get complete demyelination. Remission, which requires uh, remyelination, we see thinly myelinated uh, axons, which we also see with increased frequency in benzotropy treatment. Again, consistent with a mechanism of efficacy in this model that involves direct stimulation of remyelination. And finally, we, we can in see an increase in the number of, of, of uh, axons which are in various stages of remyelination in benzotropine treated mice compared to vehicle controls. Uh, we, we performed exhaustive in vitro and in vivo assays to evaluate the role of benzotropine uh, as an immunosuppressive in this model. We, we, didn't really, we weren't interested in, in having identified just a novel uh, immunosuppressant. And although I don't have time to go into the exhaustive number of studies we did in collaboration with Brian Lawson at Scripps, uh, a study culminating in an adoptive transfer model of PLP indicated that we, uh, this compound does not act in an immunosuppressive fashion. Namely, we found that T cells isolated from benzotropine-treated donor mice 
were able to transfer disease with a similar efficacy as vehicle-treated uh, control mice. And further, we went on to evaluate the effect of this compound on remyelination in an immune-independent toxicity model of demyelination, remyelination, which is the Cooper zone model. Uh, and again, consistent with uh, a, a enhanced remyelination activity, we found that a significant increase in the rate of remyelination in benzodiazepine treated mice compared to controls is determined based on Luxol fast blue staining as well as quantification of mature ligand dendrocytes in the corpus callosum. Now, uh, finally, for clinical uh, translation of these findings, uh, a remyelinating agent most likely would have to be used in the clinic in combination with existing immunosuppressive strategies. And so we evaluated our, our compound in combination uh, dosing approaches using uh, standard of care drugs interferon beta and FTY720. And quite encouragingly, we see when we add a suboptimal dose of our of remyelinating agent, we get a significant en enhancement of a decrease in clinical severity with both of the agents we evaluated. And significantly, in the case of FTY720, we found that uh, benzodiazepine is actually dose sparing, which means that we can use a suboptimal dose of benzodiazepine in combination with an order of magnitude less of the immunosuppressant and achieve the same level of efficacy. And this is potentially quite significant in that FTY720, while it is quite encouraging the results, there is dose-dependent cardiotoxicity. And so we could potentially uh, generate a, a therapy where we're co combining a promyelinating agent with FTY720 and we don't have the associated cardiotoxicity. Uh, so to sort of conclude, uh, we've used a high throughput screening approach to identify novel uh, inducers of, of OPC differentiation and we showed that uh, several of these including FDA approved drugs are efficacious at decreasing clinical severity in a, a relevant rodent model of MS. We also showed that these compounds uh, can be used in combination with immunosuppressive strategies. Uh, so we're currently working to, to, to come up with a clinical development plan for either benzodiazepine, a, a tropine analog, or one of the novel scaffolds that we've identified. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, uh, thank the people involved with the project, Pete Schultz, obviously, uh, Vishal and Virginie and Brian, who did the lion's share of the work, as well as uh, members of the Gage Lab. And with that, I'll take any questions. Any questions? Oh, over here. I'm coming. Well, we're going to do. We're going to do follow up. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, yeah, uh, this this looks really uh, interesting. I'm wondering if you tried this in any um, transgenic models of human disease that are that are associated with demyelination, so that it's not just like an autoimmune type. Not just an autoimmune. We haven't we haven't done that yet, but that's definitely a potential. Provide, yeah, provided it's not a ligand dendrocyte based, yeah, not a Schwann cell, yeah. <laughs>